Welcome back to Mad Medicine. In this video, we're going to be discussing atrophy. This is a important uh, mechanism you should know for your exams. Now, if you guys haven't already done so, don't forget to subscribe to our channel because your support really means a lot to us and we really appreciate it. And with that being said, let's discuss cellular adaptation before we jump right into atrophy. Now, if you guys remember, our cells are constantly under a stressful environment because of the nature of our body, right? Our cells are constantly under stress. They're going through a lot. And an example of this would be the stomach lining. Our stomach lining is constantly uh, exposed to our stomach acid, right? And our stomach acid is very, very erosive and it breaks down the stomach lining very easily. But our stomach lining has developed cellular adaptations to be able to manage the acidic environment that it is in. Now that happens at a cellular level. Organs generally are actually in a state of homeostasis under normal conditions. Even though at a small level there are things happening in an overall sense, in an organ sense, right? In a macro sense, our organs are in a state of homeostasis and that state of homeostasis is often maintained even if the organ grows or shrinks for a small period of time. Now, all of these changes that occur during a, you know, in the body usually are based off of the type of type and severity of the stress that's placed upon it. And an increase in stress is eventually going to lead to a growth of an organ because that means that there is more pressure placed on the organ and for the organ to function properly, it has to grow to be able to accommodate the stress that's happening. Now, when it comes to growth adaptations, you have two main types. That is hypertrophy and hyperplasia. We have discussed those in a previous lecture, so go ahead and check it out. But as far as growth is concerned, once an organ grows, eventually it has to you know, shrink because it is in a state of homeostasis like we wrote right here. And the way it shrinks, the way it accounts for uh, growth and it reverses growth is through atrophy. Atrophy allows for our organs to maintain homeostasis and that is very important. This is very high yield and you should commit that to your memory. So with that being said, let's discuss what atrophy really is. Atrophy is a general physiological process in which our bodies resorb and break down the tissues and this actually involves apoptosis. A lot of people think that atrophy and apoptosis are synchronous and they're one and the same, but it's actually not the case. You see, this is a subsect of atrophy. So let's write this down. Atro uh, apoptosis is a subsect of atrophy. Now we're going to uh, go into that in a second, but just so you guys know, these are not exactly the same. What happens in atrophy is that when an organ has stress placed upon it, it's naturally going to grow. But a decrease in stress on an organ is going to end, end up causing that organ to shrink through atrophy. Now, this all happens due to a lack of need, right? If there's no need for that organ to grow, if there's no stress being placed upon it, there's no reason for that organ to stay as large as it is. And you don't really need to go through hyperplasia and hypertrophy. You're going to end up going back through atrophy to decrease the size. There are two main processes that occur uh, when an organ is going through atrophy, and that is the organ ends up decreasing the number of cells it has, which, if you recall, is essentially the opposite of hypertrophy or it's going to undergo uh, a decrease in the number, sorry, in the size of cells or in the number of cells, which is the opposite of hyperplasia. I got that mixed up for a second, so don't do that. If it decreases in the size of the cell, it's, uh, it's reversing hypertrophy. If it decreases the number of cells, it's reversing the hyperplasia that has occurred. So let's talk a little bit more about that because knowing just what happens uh, in atrophy is not enough. You kind of do need to know the, uh, the mechanisms of atrophy because they're very specific uh, to each, this, uh, the decrease in size and the decrease in number. So let's just dive right into the mechanisms. First off, we're going to talk about the decrease in the size of cells, which is essentially the opposite of hypertrophy. So in order to decrease your size, what ends up happening is a protein called ubiquitin is released. And all of this happens due to the ubiquitin proteasome degradation pathway and autophagy. That's very, very important. This is very high yield because a lot of people forget that to reduce or to reverse hypertrophy, you're going to go through the ubiquitin proteasome degradation pathway. So commit that to your memory because this is very high yield. So what ends up happening is ubiquitin is going to end up binding to the intermediate filament, uh, filaments in the cytoskeleton. And when ubiquitin binds, proteasomes can then recognize the ubiquitin binding. And because 
they recognize reubiquitin binding, it's going to end up destroying the cytoskeleton. When your cytoskeleton is destroyed, it's going to activate the lysosomes and essentially you're going to go through autophagy. The cell is going to eat itself alive because the cytoskeleton is starting to get destroyed and all of that is because of the ubiquitin proteasome degradation pathway. Very high yield. Do not forget that. Now, this is an example of reversing hypertrophy. But as you know, when it comes to growth, hypertrophy is just one mechanism of growth. The other mechanism is hyperplasia, and that's the other way atrophy works. It decreases the number of cells, and all of that happens essentially via apoptosis. What ends up happening is you are going to essentially destroy the cells completely. In the ubiquitin proteasome degradation pathway, you're going to end up reducing the size, right? You're just decreasing the size. You're not killing the cell completely. The cell usually stays. It's just a reduction. It's a shrinking in the size. When you are going through apoptosis, this is programmed cell death, and there's no coming back from programmed cell death. So when you go through programmed cell death, you're actually decreasing the number of cells. When you go through the ubiquitin proteasome degradation pathway, you're simply degrading the cell so it becomes a little bit smaller and you're decreasing the size. That is the main takeaway you should remember. So we're going to write that one more time so it sticks in your brain. If you want to reverse hypertrophy, you're going to go through something called the ubiquitin proteasome degradation pathway, which is essentially the opposite of uh, hypertrophy. That's why I'm writing 1 over hypertrophy. Okay. It's a little bit of math. Oh, forgot the H. Hypertrophy. And then if you want to decrease a, a, the number of cells, if you want to uh, reverse hyperplasia, you're going to go through apoptosis, which is programmed cell death. And that is a different, that is essentially the opposite of hyperplasia. All right, so this should stick into your mind. And I'm just going to write, remember this because this is pretty high yield. So that is how atrophy occurs. Now we're going to talk about two more concepts that relate to atrophy. They're really close. They're not exactly the same, but it's definitely something you should know when it comes to cellular adaptations and growth. And those two concepts are aplasia and hypoplasia. Aplasia is a birth defect where an organ or a tissue is completely absent. It is no longer present or it was never created. And the way it ends up happening is that you have a failure of cells to develop during embryogenesis. That's very important. You have a failure of cells to even develop. They're not even there. An example of this would be renal agenesis. When babies are born with renal agenesis, one or both of their kidneys are no longer present. They have no kidneys to begin with. All of that happens because the cells fail to develop when the embryo was developing into a fetus, into a baby. So that is one example. That is aplasia. Uh, the next concept you need to have a good understanding of is hypoplasia. And hypoplasia is essentially the underdevelopment or incomplete development of an organ or a tissue. Essentially, in this case, your tissue did not develop completely. That's why you have the word or the prefix hypo in front, right? You have hypoplasia. Uh, this all ends up happening is because uh, because you have a decrease in cellular production during embryogenesis. This is different than aplasia because in aplasia in aplasia you have a failure of cells to develop completely. In hypoplasia, you have those cells develop, but they're just not completely developed. There is a decrease in the production. Now, often this ends up causing patients to have uh, a a underdeveloped or a small and often malfunctioning organ, whatever the organ might be. And one classic, classic example of this is thymus hypoplasia in DeGeorge syndrome. That is one example of hypoplasia. Um, and I hope this made it very clear and it was very straightforward. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and we will see you right back real soon.